Okay, so today was Google's big event, Google I.O. 2025. And they kicked it off with a keynote from Sundar Pichai himself. As you can see him walking out onto the stage here. And honestly, one of the things he said at the start, I felt really set the tone for a lot of the actual keynote today. And that was that while you might imagine that Google has been saving up a whole bunch of model releases, etc., to announce at the keynote, Actually, nowadays, they're just as likely to release a model on a random Tuesday in March as they are to go and save it for the actual Google Keynote. And they had this nice graphic that they showed where literally over the last 12 months, they've been continually releasing models and updating iterations of models. And this is something that I've talked about on the channel multiple times in the past, that the whole Gemini team really has this process now of trying to iterate to get the best model rather than just save it up for a big release. Now that said, there were lots of models that were announced today and I'll go through those in a sec, but I kind of feel that even though that there were lots of models that were revealed today, it wasn't about the models. It really was about how these models are now being used in products to actually give people things that they want. And I kind of feel that this is something quite different than what we saw at Google I.O. last year and over the past couple of years, in fact, where I think far too many companies have been focused on coming out with the latest and greatest LLM and not really focused on building products around those LLMs or diffusion video models, diffusion image models, etc. Now, as many of you know, I'm a tester for the Google models. I've got a long history with Google. So even though while I knew a lot of the things that were going to be released, I'm going to say I was surprised at just how well they came together as products and seeing people's reaction to them as a product and not just the model. So let's jump in quickly, have a look at the models and the products that were released. I'm certainly going to be doing some follow-up videos probably later this week and perhaps over the weekend to show off some of the models and talk a little bit about what they can do and how as a developer you can use them to create your own products. But first, let's look at some of the announcements just around the traction of AI in Google. So they talked about that this time last year, they were processing around 9.7 trillion tokens a month across all the products and APIs. Now today they're doing over 480 trillion tokens. So that's an increase of 50 times what it was this time last year. And they had a variety of other sort of stats that just showed how much adoption and usage is actually going on with the Gemini series of models and how even things like the 2.5 Pro release in the actual consumer Gemini app has increased usage by 45%. So just quickly, talking of the new Gemini models that got announced today, the first one was the new version of 2.5 Flash. So while this is still in sort of a preview state, it's expected to go GA in June. And the goal clearly here is to make a reasonably low cost model that has got a lot of intelligence in it and can be used as your general sort of workhorse here. Next up, they announced a new thing that is coming to Gemini 2.5 Pro, and this is Deep Think. So you can think of this as being even more test time compute, perhaps similar to some of the Pro models that you've seen OpenAI release, etc. And I'll save this to make a full video of showing just sort of what it can do and how it is actually better than just the straight up 2.5 Pro. On top of these, they also announced a bunch of improvements for the live API and for the native audio out. So many people have liked the Notebook LM product and the whole sort of ability to have two voices running a podcast kind of thing. A lot of that ability is now incorporated into the live API. So the live API, you've probably heard me refer to it as the bi-di API or the bi-directional API. And on top of the bit of audio, they're also working to basically bring computer use for this. So I've covered multiple different versions of computer use on the channel. And this is something similar, but using the latest Gemini models now. 
The next big Gemini release that they actually announced was Gemini Diffusion. And just showing you this here, all of this is actually real time that it can basically just generate so many tokens out. You can see here, it's basically generated out 1500 tokens in 1 1.8 seconds, averaging 860 tokens. Now I've played it with a bunch of different examples, both my own and ones suggested by them. And it seems that you can sort of max it out at around 1100, perhaps even 1200 tokens per second. But most of the time you're able to get something out around this sort of 800, 900 tokens per second range. Now, this is far from being the sort of most intelligent model. The goal here is that this would perhaps replace the flashlight model as being a really speedy model that you can basically use for general use. But you can see here that the goal here is that this is like at least sort of 5x the speed of Gemini 2.0 flashlight. So this is the first public Gemini diffusion model that we've seen. And up until now, I've resisted making a video about the sort of diffusion text models for a number of different reasons. I think I'll revisit this in the future and actually sort of explain a little bit about the diffusion text models and some of the interesting phenomena that actually is around how they work and their strengths and weaknesses, etc. But it's great to see that the Gemini team is actually making this public so people can try it out and actually give feedback on both the quality and the quality versus speed, etc. Now, along with the new Gemini models themselves, Google also announced that they're actually incorporating MCP or model context protocol into the actual Gemini SDK itself. So this is something that's certainly going to be interesting to look at. On top of this, they've also done a rather big refresh of Google AI Studio. And we can see a whole bunch of new things in here, including things like passing in URLs as context, where it can go and scrape that page and bring that content in to use in your prompts, etc. We can also set thinking mode on or off for some of the various models and also set a thinking budget of how many tokens do we actually want to spend on the thinking going through this. The Gemini 2.5 Flash TTS system now is in here. You can see that, okay, you can select either a single speaker or multiple speakers in here. You can go through and actually select the two different speakers. And we can even come in and use the Gemini Live components to actually talk to it or do a webcam, share a screen, etc. And you'll notice that there's a lot more options for dealing with the audio in that stream, getting it to focus just on one voice, those kind of things. Again, I think this is something that probably deserves its own whole video to actually sort of play around with it. Now, while the Gemini models themselves are awesome, it really is the products that they're powering that make it far more interesting. And the sort of lead product clearly is Google search. So Sundar talked about the whole sort of AI overviews and that was sort of launched last year, but they've now developed this whole thing, AI mode in search, which allows you to sort of have an ongoing conversation, much more to sort of just a regular LLM interface with search incorporated in there. But actually what's going on in the background is this is able then to write multiple queries, find various information and pull it back into the context of the conversation. So they also talked about deep search, which is kind of akin to some of the deep research stuff that we've seen in the Gemini app, which has been pretty much copied by every LLM provider now. And on top of this, we've also seen the agentic capabilities from what last year was sort of announced as Project Mariner to now being something that you can run inside your browser and it has the ability to either do sort of one shot things where it goes off and does something, or you can actually teach it a routine of perhaps you want to go and check a certain website each day or something. You can actually teach it that routine and then get it to repeat that kind of thing. So it's sort of learning and repeating different tasks as you go along. All these browser tasks are definitely going to make it easier for people doing shopping. And it really is going to require businesses to sort of rethink how they actually sell things on the internet with people having these sort of bots just automatically going and finding what they want at the best price. It's definitely changing the game of how you're going to do advertising, of how you're perhaps going to handle things like coupons, that kind of stuff. 
Now, the other big thing that we've seen with these Gemini apps is that last year they announced Project Astra. That was using Gemini 1.5 to be able to do some of the things that it could do. Basically, all those features now are in the Gemini Live app. So that means you can do not only live conversation with Gemini, you can actually have the video on and be able to ask it questions about things that you see in the video. You can have it doing searches that relate to something that you're looking at. A whole bunch of different tasks that we saw sort of featured in Project Astra now is basically shipping. And the amazing thing, because this is not going to be cheap for Google to run, but the amazing thing is they're actually making this free on both iOS and Android platforms for people to use with their mobile device. Okay, so the last one that I'll cover here probably was the show stealer of the day. And this was two new models being the Image Gen 4 model and the VO3 video model, which absolutely blew people out of the water watching this. This comes about as a product called Flow. I'll talk about that in a second. The actual models themselves were kind of previewed in that every Googler that came on stage had a video that was made with VO, which was clearly them, but had something that showed that it was clearly an AI video, like perhaps their hair would change color or suddenly they were in a different location or all these sorts of things. And it became pretty obvious to most people that, hang on a minute, this is not VO2. This is way better than VO2 is able to do. And sure enough, they introduced VO3 and they showed that not only could VO3 do video generation a lot better than before, it can now generate native audio. So that means it can generate sound effects, it can generate sort of scenes, it can generate background noise, and probably most amazingly, it can actually generate dialogue. So let's just take a look at that and see what that's like. They left behind a, a ball today. It bounced higher than I can jump. What manner of magic is that? This ocean, it's a force, a wild, untamed might. And she commands your awe with every breaking light. All right, so as you can see, it's pretty amazing that all of that is being generated just by VO3. Now, the product that sort of encompasses all of this is this product called Flow. And the idea here is that really this software is allowing people to become filmmakers and allowing people to create a whole sort of cinematic universe where you can basically set up a character, you can use character consistency with the VO3 model to make multiple scenes with that same character. Obviously, you can have all the audio and stuff like that. And then you can sort of edit it together to actually create either some sort of mini short right through to a much longer short movie, perhaps even a full sort of cinematic movie in here. Now, I think this is going to be huge that this is really unlocking the creativity of so many people to be able to create movies when people can actually just come up with a storyline, perhaps using Gemini or using being assisted by Gemini, combine that with making some really good images of a character in Image Gen 4, and then putting that into VO3 to actually create the various scenes, and then using this flow software to stitch it all together you got to think that there's going to be a lot of people out there, perhaps on YouTube or somewhere else, that are going to be making content that's far more interesting than what's on Netflix now and some of the stuff that's out there. I wonder like how much sort of fan, forget fan fiction, we're going to see sort of full fan movies of fleshing out things in various universes and perhaps telling stories that just would never have a chance at all of being told in Hollywood. Yet, because the costs are going to be so much lower, people are going to be able to do that. And they're going to be able to do that in sort of cartoon form, stop motion animation, full sort of normal characters. You're going to see a variety of different things out there. And I got to think this is going to be really fascinating to just see how long does it take before we see some 16-year-old kid actually producing a full movie.
Anyway, I'm conscious that this video has gone on for quite a while. Like I talked about, I'm going to definitely make some more follow-up videos about some of the actual model stuff and how it works and how you can use it, etc. If you haven't seen anything about the keynote, it's definitely worth checking out one of the greatest hits videos that are on YouTube of the best moments of it, just to look at some of these products and see them in action so you can actually try them out yourself. If you have watched one of those already, let me know in the comments what you found to be the most interesting thing that was announced at Google I.O. this year. I'm going to be heading back for day two. I may make some videos about some of the things that I've left out here, like the new Gemma models, which have got some really cool things about them, like some of the updates to things like ADK and AI Studio, etc. Anyway, for now, I'm going to finish this up and say that this has definitely been one of the more interesting Google IOs keynotes that I've seen over the years. I think they announced a lot of good stuff. And I definitely think we've seen this transition start to happen now of where people are no longer just focused on the models and the specs of the models and stuff like that, and really much more focused on all the creative uses that people can actually use these things for. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.